I have another knife I want to share with you today. Today it is the Farrier from the Chinese company Real Steel. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this tiny knife, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank the company Real Steel for sending me the Farrier so that I could share it with you. So the quick backstory on this is I didn't ask for it. They asked me if I'd like to take a look at this knife. And the reason is I recently reviewed another knife from Real Steel, the Bushcraft Plus. Really high quality, high value knife for sure. I love it. I actually do really like that knife. However, there is a couple of things about it that you need to know. One is, and if you watch the review, you'll hear me go into this at a bit of length. Don't remove the handles. They have Allen's key, uh, Allen uh, key uh, nuts on them so that they're intended to be removed. Actually, they, they provide you the Allen wrench for doing that. But um, I lost one of the nuts first time I took it off just to see how well it would operate. I lost it at home and uh, the company had to send me a replacement. I can only say this. Had I done it in the woods, then, um, and while I was using the knife, I would have been really disappointed. As it was, I had, it was a delay before I could bring this review to you because the company had to send me a replacement. They didn't have to. They kindly did so, which I truly appreciate. However, to cover, make it worthwhile for them to ship that little nut, uh, nut to me, they said, would you take another knife and review it at the same time? And this is the knife they wanted to send me. So I agreed to. And, you know, now that I have it, there's a lot of good things to say about this knife. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to close in on the knife. I'm going to go through the specifications and the design for the knife. There's not a lot of testing or demonstration I can do for it, but I will talk about my experiences with it. Just before we go into the details of the Real Steel Furrier, I thought I'd share with you the sheath that it came with because I do have a few comments on that. And then, of course, I want to move on from that so we can focus on the knife. So this is the sheath the knife came with. It's a good quality leather sheath. It is undyed. I did put a coating of uh, snow seal on it because, uh, well, it was an undyed sheath and that's, uh, I wanted to give it some protection. I'll show you how the knife goes into the sheath and you can see it's in there kind of loose. There is this dome retention snap on it that actually doesn't do much of anything to hold it in. So a bit of a miss here as well. And uh, the way you're supposed to wear this, well, it's scout style. Can you see the sewn on straps that you would wear horizontally across your belt? Well, first comment is, how do you get your belt under them? It would have to be like a dress belt for a pair of pants you wear to an office because uh, any good sized belt is not getting underneath there at all. And even if I could get the belt underneath there, I'd be a little concerned about the retention carrying it in that direction. So what does that leave you? Neck, neck knife, lanyard, that's exactly how I set it up. So I ran a piece of paracord, just looped it uh, through the back here with the lark's head onto the back and now I can carry this around my neck. And you know, it's okay like that. In fact, I like it. Maybe a little tiny bit heavy. In fact, I think the sheath is way overbuilt for a neck knife. Um, you can see, I suppose, if the retention had been good, you could carry it upside down, but not the way the retention is on this sheath right now. Okay, let's just finish off on the sheath. It's functional. It'll do the job. Could it have been better? A whole lot better but the quality is there. So it's, again, it's up to you whether or not you want to risk carrying it horizontal or like me, carry it as a neck knife. Let's get this out of the way. All right, I want to do the specifications for the knife and then we'll talk about the design. There's a couple of interesting features in the design here. Overall length, 6.89 inches, it, it, which is 175 millimeters. Blade, 2.99 inches. That's about as close to three inches as you're gonna get. 76 millimeters. Blade thickness, 0.14 of an inch, 3.6 millimeters. Blade steel, excellent choice. Bowler N690, high quality stainless steel. Not one of the super steels, but as high as you can get before you make that jump into the super steels. This one came with a olive wood. Yeah, yeah, I like it. You know, it's it's nice. It's probably going to get dirty from handling, but that's quite okay. But it's a nice quality wood. It's very dense and it's quite attractive on the knife itself. Okay, so let's just talk about the design of the knife. Now, there are two knives 
that uh, I could have had. They offered me, there's two furriers, let's put it that way. The other furrier is a full-on skinny knife. It has this huge belly under here and round it like this. Ideal for skinning. I absolutely, I can see that. But that's very task specific. And I wanted the knife that I'd be a little bit more general in its usage. So I chose this one. This one's called a harpoon design. So let's just start right up there. When you see a swedge like that, unsharpened, of course, that's raised above the back of the knife. That's usually referred to as harpoon design. There is a slight clip to it as it goes down towards the point, and there's still a fair amount of belly. In fact, that's still a skinning knife, or at least it could be used as, maybe not as well as the other design that comes from in this, in this blade, the Furrier. Uh, okay, jimping from about mid-spine on the back to about the middle of the blade. Light jimpening. Why so much jimpening right along here? Well, it's because if you're holding this to skin with, well, I'll show you a couple of ways of holding it in your hands as after I, I go through it a little bit more. But, uh, okay, there are thumb scallops on the wood here. You can hold it like this or like that quite comfortably. It does provide a little extra control. The spine of the knife is proud, meaning it is just above the wood. That's an aesthetic, it's not necessarily functional, but that's through all the way around the knife. It's just above the wood. Yeah, it really doesn't have an impact on its performance at all. The scales are removable with tiny, tiny torques. I don't even know how small they'd have to be, what size that would be. So if you wanted to remove these scales and put something else on, you could. Tiny bit of jimping right here. Now here's the obvious, the thumb hole, or not thumb hole, th finger hole, with a little bit of jimping right there. What is this all about? Well, if you look at it from a skinning point of view, that allows you to get your finger in there. It's not a fighting knife, it's not a karambit. I know somebody will think that's what the design is for. No, it's actually about doing this, letting it fall out of your hand. So if you're working inside of an animal and you need all your fingers available to you, you can drop, not drop it, but you can let the knife go and still keep it in your hand so that all you have to do is rotate your hand over and pick it up again. And you can get way forward on the knife with that grip. In fact, if I take my finger out, because I've got the big fingers, you can get really, really, because of the little bit of a choil here and the way it's designed, and I have a finger just in the tip of it, I can really get a long way forward on this knife and keep maintain control and do fine work, which is what one of the things you're looking for from a skinning knife. Okay, I don't skin a lot of animals. Actually, I don't skin any animals. My hunting days have long since gone by, so I didn't really need a skinning knife, but would it work as a neck knife, something I could carry around in the woods and use for whatever neck knife tasks you have? Yeah, actually it does. Mostly, mostly. I, I like the fact that it has a near full flat grind all the way to the top. You can see there's just a tiny bit of flat at the top up there. Otherwise you would call that a full flat grind. Making this to be quite slicey. So uh, great for skinning, but great for food prep. Just t tasks right at hand when you're doing some work at camp, preparing a meal. This is a great little knife. In fact, I use this at home for a while just to get used to it for that task, cutting vegetables, cutting meat, cutting different things like that. Uh, so it does function very well in that fashion. I don't know that the swedge adds a whole lot in terms of trying to get inside of something. Usually they're added to a knife that is more of a combat style for penetration to make it a little easier to penetrate. But uh, that's not what this knife is all about. However, there is plenty of strength at the tip, so you can do some drilling. Now, it's not a bushcraft knife. You can see how high the point is, but you can still drill with this. You just have to be aware of how you're going to drill into wood or anything else. Here's what I would have liked this knife to do, but it's not going to do without quite a bit of modification. Wouldn't it be great if this was a tiny fire steel type of a knife, a knife that you could scrape a fire steel with, or fat wood, or anything else you want to scrape with? Well, certainly not with all that jimping, you're not going to be scraping anything. And the forward edge where that swedge is, it's not sharp. Oh, let's see. No, it's not sharp. I can feel a little bit of a burr. I think that's just for me playing with it, trying to do a fire steel with it, but it's not sharp enough 
to strike a fire steel. Unfortunate because, boy, wouldn't this be a nice little knife for using as fire starting as well as all the other tasks. Uh, the fact that it's stainless steel, really great choice for a knife like this. If it's whether it's uh, as a hunting knife, skinning knife, I mean, I can still process fish and the like. But as I mentioned, ideal for food prep right here at on the ground as I prepare my lunch. That's where I think I like the use of this the most. Just a tiny knife that will do all of those tasks, certainly package opening and things. This could be an EDC knife for you at home around town, not with that sheath, maybe. But with another sheath designed for it, I think it would work well. I would encourage Real Steel to see if they could come up with something a little bit better in the terms of maybe Kydex uh, that could be adapted for use as an EDC knife, because I think this would actually be a bit of a winner in that respect. Okay, as I mentioned, there's not a lot I can say about the knife. There's not a lot I can demonstrate with the knife, but I have given you my thoughts on it. So let's wrap this video up. All right, closing thoughts on the Real Steel Furrier. At least I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. That's the way it's phonetically, I would say it, Furrier. Um, you know, it makes sense as a skinny knife, especially the other design with the more bold, uh, rounded forward edge on the blade really makes sense as a skinny knife. As an EDC knife, yeah, actually this is quite nice in that respect. Like I said, I've done a lot of EDC tasks with it and it still works despite the fact that it doesn't have a sharpened spine. Now, that, really that's only necessary if you're doing things like uh, fire steel, right? Or scraping anything else with. Not really a good carving knife, but it's still fine enough at the edge that you can do some small notching and things in wood with. It's not really meant for that. It's meant for all the other little tasks and primarily, as I mentioned, skinning. Um, food prep. That's where I see this is really going to excel for me. This is a small camp food prep knife. So if you're in the market for a small knife and you don't want to pay big bucks for a custom made one or something that's in the higher range, N690 steel, Great steel, great choice for this knife. So once again, I'll put all the specifications and the links to where you can take a closer look for, at this knife in the video description below. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.